former president of Brandeis College, Frederick Lawrence, and the former president of McAllister College, Brian Rosenberger here. Gentlemen, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Fred, what is it about this issue, especially for elite institutions, that becomes so incredibly difficult? I think that presidents are balancing two important factors. On the one hand, the whole basis of a campus of a university is academic freedom, free expression, the right for students to inquire, and protest is, in fact, part of that. On the other hand, it is also critically important that a campus be safe. No one can learn when they're not safe. And so those are the things that are being balanced. I think it's important to add, I've been on a lot of campuses the last a couple of weeks uh, in my capacity as head of Phi Beta Kappa to tell you the vast majority of campuses are not the pictures you have up on your screen. So the ones you have up on your screen, uh, yeah. obviously, are getting a lot of attention and they're worth focusing on and paying attention to. But I think by and large, that's what you have is the need to balance student needs to express themselves with students' rights to be safe. So we're watching video, and I don't think anybody's saying that students don't have a right to protest. I think some of the things they're chanting might... Uh, flop over from protest to inciting violence, different story. One of the images we watched was from Harvard University. I think you're right to point out that this isn't happening everywhere. Um, and this was Harvard students walking out of graduation at one point. And what's interesting is we're going to play them back to back. We're going to play a, a soundbite from Harvard's commencement address. And then next to it, Jim Vandehei, who is the founder of Axios, uh, gave a speech a very different speech, I might add, at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Um, and I think that may be what you're referring to as one of these places that doesn't have this problem. Take a listen. Because I accepted your invitation to be here today, I was attacked online and called anti-Semitic by power and money because they want power and money. Either way, you're not that special. It doesn't matter if you graduated with a 4.0, if you're hot, uh, if you're popular. None of that's going to matter uh, in the real world. And flip side, if you got crappy grades, don't think that much of yourself right now, welcome to the club, buddy. Like you're now in the real world. And so what actually matters is starting tomorrow, what are you going to do each and every day to be a better version of you? Brian, is there something about values here, and I'm going to be pejorative, but elite institutions, uh, they have boards that are quite interested in what all their board members talk about uh, out at the Hamptons, and nobody wants to ruffle feathers, nobody wants to take a stand. And then you go to the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, and it's just a different value set. Well, first of all, I just want to echo what Fred said, which is that there are a lot more schools that are like the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh than there are like Harvard. Uh, and I think you, if you look at where the protests have occurred, they have been disproportionately at elite and wealthy schools. Uh, and I do think those schools are more likely to be uh, affected by worries about donors, about reputation, uh, than schools that are just more worried about having enough students to fill their seats and having enough money to balance their budget. Uh, and there's also an inverse relation between the amount of the number of Pell students that you have uh, and the likelihood of mm -hmm. protests. So Pell students who are mostly worried about going to school and working their jobs and getting through uh, are much less likely to protest uh, than the students at these very elite institutions. It, it, it is a fact. Follow the money, uh, as I was always taught as a journalist. Um, Fred, I'll give you the last word real quickly. What is it about this issue of people being able to express their minds when it comes to Jews um, that Congress seems to not be able to get through to these presidents? In that, we all know that if people were acting in the same way towards blacks or gays that they're acting towards Jews, the response would be very different. I'd say two things. First is that on most of those campuses, the presidents are, in fact, speaking out against anti-Semitism. And you actually heard some of that in the hearings yesterday. The other thing I would say is that about half of the members of that committee were asking very different kinds of questions. And we're asking questions about what kind of legislation would be useful. There is bipartisan legislation before the Committee on Education and Workforce right now addressing issues of anti-Semitism and campus protests. 
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.